So today's video, I'm going to talk about the morph transition in PowerPoint. If you don't know what that is, um, transitions are kind of like animations. Animations are things that you can do in PowerPoint to things like a box, a shape, a picture. Um, transitions are things that you can do to slides. And I like to use the morph transition a lot like, uh, well, it's a lot like Magic Move in Keynote, if you're familiar with that. Uh, Microsoft has finally caught up to Keynote in that regard, uh, being able to move multiple things from one slide to another very easily. Um, and I'm gonna show you how to do that now. Let me show you kind of like where I got the idea to make this video. Uh, and that's because last week, uh, I was invited to speak by the Chicago Bar Association um, at a CLE, a Continuing Legal Education Seminar. And uh, I was putting together a quick PowerPoint for that. The title of it, let me show you, I'll show you the PowerPoint that I actually used. The title of it was uh, Technology in the Courtroom Advice from the Bar and Bench. Uh, we actually presented the CLE, uh, me and uh, three other panelists, uh, from a judge's courtroom at the Daly Center, which is the state court here uh, in Cook County, which is the county where Chicago sits. And so what I had done, and let me show you actually an excerpt from the presentation itself that uses the morph transition and is what really got me thinking about um, showing it in the video for you guys. So let's start the uh, PowerPoint from a certain slide. We'll start it from here. Uh, I had made a, like a quick handout for, uh, for the CLE as well. And I used that handout as the roadmap for my talk. I had 30 minutes to talk. And um, as I transitioned from kind of one subject area to another, and then one subset to another, I used the morph transition uh, in order to help kind of direct and guide uh, the discussion. And so the second part, or the second like block uh, of uh, material that I talked about at that last CLE uh, was software, software that you could use in, uh, in a courtroom. And so here's uh, an image of the handout that I had. And then on my next click, I brought out just um, the software portion uh, of that document that I used a morph transition. Then on the next slide, I clicked again and I'll use another morph transition to talk about just uh, PowerPoint and other trial presentation software that you can use. And then at this point, I use animations to click on, here's a PowerPoint uh, icon and then three uh, trial presentation software kind of options that you have. Now, I only have 30 minutes and I wanna talk about what kind of trial presentation software is and what it does and what it looks like. And so I use another morph transition here to focus on trial pad. And so then I uh, move the trial pad logo to the center. And then at this point, I switched inputs uh, on the projector uh, to the iPad, which I had also had uh, connected uh, in the room. So that's kind of like how I use the morph transition. And what I want to do with you guys is kind of go over how you can build something similar uh, using a couple of examples. So what I'll do is, uh, or what I did was, I had Kevin download for me uh, just three PDFs. Um, and I just kind of wanted it to be like, let's say you wanted to show like a series uh, of uh, notifications or uh, correspondences or events. Let's say if you wanted to build it in a timeline or not even to use a timeline just to show that three things happened. Um, I picked the theme of a cease and desist letter. So we're gonna go over three cease and desist letters. We just kind of did a Google search for cease and desist letters and found three. Um, and that's what I'll show for you. And let's kind of pretend that these are all part of the same case and saying that um, we've sent cease and desist letters to three either different parties or same parties. It doesn't really matter uh, for the sake of the example. But let's get into PowerPoint. Let's start with a new uh, presentation. We'll go to blank. Uh, first thing I always do is I delete all the stuff that's on there. And then I usually like to work with a black slide to begin with. Um, that's my preference. So I'll go to the color ribbon er, variance section of the design ribbon. I'll pick black. And then I always change the fonts to Arial, Arial. And that's because no matter what computer you're working on, Windows, Mac, new, old, all the computers always have Arial. So anyway, that's my first slide. Uh, I'm gonna hit Command, click on the first slide and hit Command D a couple of times so I can just uh, duplicate um, or Control D and I'll duplicate uh, the slide that's on there. Uh, and then on slide two, here's what I'll do on slide two, um, I'll insert all three of the cease and desist letters that I want to talk about. So I'm going to go to slide two, go to the insert ribbon. And then if I'm going too fast, you know, it's, you know, a lot of times I have to repeat myself when I do um, talks. 
Um, but what's nice about these YouTube videos is if we're going too fast, just hit the rewind button. You can go back. If you're watching it on mobile, there's like a, usually like a 15 second or 10 second rewind button. So we're on the insert ribbon. I'm gonna go to pictures. You can also just drag and drop from a folder. Uh, on my desktop, I have a folder here. Uh, and here are the three um, cease and desist letters. Now, originally there were three PDFs, but if you wanna use PDFs in a um, PowerPoint, and you want to use something other than the first page, um, then you're going to have to convert that PDF into an image file, either a TIFF, .tiff or .tif. I'm not sure what the difference is, um, or like a JPEG. Right. So that's what I've done here. And so you could see this Owens one has two pages. This cease and desist letter has one, and the Eckhart cease and desist letter has one, two. And I'm going to focus on the first page of each. So I'm just going to grab all three of these by holding the control button down and selecting the first page of each one of these letters. Now I have all of them uh, inserted onto my side at the same time. While I have them here, I'm going to put on a border. I usually like to put this dark gray or sometimes I put like this navyish color on there. And then I like to put on a uh, drop shadow. Now why would you put on a drop shadow even though I have a black background? It, usually just comes in handy um, for me to do so. So for example, if you look at this kind of area right here, you could see like the nice de delineation between the pages and it looks like they're sitting on top of each other. That's why I put the drop shadow because even you might not see it on the background of the slide, but if you ever put it on top of something, which we probably will, um, then you'll get nice definition between kind of your pages. So I'm gonna um, reselect all three of these, hit control A, and I'm gonna resize them. And I'm going to resize them in a way, I want them to have like a, a visual ticker on the side, I guess on this side, on the side of the slide. So I want to have three kind of like thumbnails and I want to talk about each one in series. They'll get bigger and then we'll make them smaller. Right? So I need to be able to fit all three of these uh, on the slide at the same time. I'd like it to kind of fill the page if I can. So um, I think I can make them a little bit bigger. What I'll do is, I've got the first one, second one, and third one selected. I like where the top one ends. I like where the bottom one ends. I always like to leave a little bit more margin on the bottom than on the top. So I've got these three selected, and I'm just going to, on the f uh, home ribbon or either on the format ribbon, if you go to a line, you can distribute them vertically. And so it'll kind of space them out evenly. So that's three. So this is going to be like kind of like the basic uh, like template that we're working with. The first slide I want to talk about, um, I'm going to talk about, there were three cease and desist letters uh, sent out. And here's what they said. Right, so then on slide two, I'll just duplicate uh, slide two. So I have uh, on slide three. And then I will take this image and I'll make it fit kind of the entire slide. Right? So there we go, nice and big. And on slide three, I will put a morph transition. All right. Then on slide four, I'll duplicate slide two again, copy, and I'll paste that as slide four. I will make slide image two be the biggest one. And I'll center it. Notice that when I get it centered, there's and I, I'm holding down my left click. Um, you can see when you have it centered like that dash, it's really subtle. The dash line comes out that lets you know it's centered and you can let it down there. And then I'll paste another version of that slide again. And this time I'll make the third image. Now we've added the third page to it and I've added the transi more transition there. And on slide six, we're gonna go back to having the three kind of thumbnail images on the side. So if we start that from the beginning, we will see first slide is blank. Second slide, we have the kind of the three images. We'll talk about the first letter that comes in on a click. We can talk about it, then get to the next letter on the second click. And then we can talk about that for a little bit. And then on the third click, we go to letter number three. And then on the fourth click, we go back to the uh, kind of just the thumbnail images on the side. So that's how we would treat something like this, where you need to show three things that happened, um, but kind of like the time sequence isn't that important. So things like notice, um, that's something that I would use this rather than a timeline because whether they're two months apart or two years apart, it doesn't really matter. You just want to show that there's lots of times where this defendant 
um, knew about something or should have known about something and should have done something differently. So that's kind of one way I would look at uh, documents. That's one way that I would use the morph transition. I mean, ideally, and I made another PowerPoint about this just uh, to give you guys an example. Um, what I would what I would probably do in something like this is I would go another step further. And here's another one that I made. And I set it up so that way the document comes out and then a call out comes out after that so I can make sure I have the image as big and legible as possible. And then I have that go away and then we go to the next one. And then I have that pop out automatically on a timer and then I can make it go away on command and click to the third letter, have their important or relevant portion pop out automatically. And then when I'm done talking about it, make that go away and then have the thumbnail go back into the corner. If you'd like to see how I did that, if you want to talk about callouts, uh, I'm not sure if everyone already knows how to do that, but if you want to see how I make callouts, um, leave me a comment down below or hit the thumbs up button. That'll be a signal to me that you guys want to see that and that can be what's in the next video.